This is what an average pour of resin looks like. You got your A and B. You got your graduated cup. You want to pour the A, which is the resin, tends to be a little bit thicker unless you warm it up beforehand. And it's better to warm it up beforehand so it's not so thick. Make sure that you are measuring it exactly one to one as, as much as possible. It helps if it's on a flat surface when you're measuring it out. The hardener tends to be a little bit more fluid and uh, it doesn't take as long for it to settle in the graduated cup. And then I use these plastic stirring rods. You can get them from a chemistry supply store. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not doing a good job of showing you the mixing. I think I get better at that in just a second. But um, basically, the idea is you want to make sure that you mix completely. And so s make sure you scrape off all, all the material from the sides of the cup regularly and get everything mixed in really evenly. If the resin, the part A, is really thick, uh, I've noticed you get more air bubbles. One of the reasons that you want to warm it up before you start mixing it. Um, but those air bubbles uh, are something to contend with. So here I'm pouring part of that mixture into a separate cup. I'm cleaning off the mixing stick. And now I've got two different cups so I can do two different colors. And I want to show you two different ways that I introduce color. One is by using powdered pigments. You can buy those at an art store. And this is just cerulean blue. Mix it in. Uh, of course, the more pigment you add, the more color there is. The more opaque it's going to be, depending on the pigment. Uh, in this case, that's a really, th that's quite a bit of pigment. Another option for adding color to resin is uh, using just regular acrylic paint. And you're noticing that I'm using baby wipes to clean off the glass rod. This is uh, acrylic paint, just regular acrylic paint uh, you don't, doesn't take much especially at uh, these small quantities just a little daub of of acrylic is enough to to add quite a bit of color to the resin mixture you see it kind of takes a little bit for it to start bleeding out into the rest of the resin but it's a really nice color in this case, this particular pigment is fairly opaque, so even that little bit of color is going to result in a, in a fairly opaque layer. So again, using uh, baby wipes to clean off the glass stirring rod in between mixing keeps those colors separate. So now I've got two different colors, and I'm going to set up my surface to pour them on. I'm using these styrofoam uh, from packaging styrofoam shapes that I cut out from this uh, sheet of st uh, packaging styrofoam. And uh, just kind of curious to see how well they interacted with the resin and what happened. I'm going to set that board on top of another cup so that if the resin drips off the sides, it doesn't puddle on the side of the board. And then, of course, I want to put something below that to catch all the dripping so it doesn't get on my table. I'm putting some resin down on the board first to act as an adhesive uh, to glue the foam pieces down to the board. Although it's probably not necessary because the resin is going to be all over the place on top of the, the foam. So it's going to hold it down just fine. Um, and I'm just pouring them on top of each other, letting them mix together just to kind of experiment and see what happens with these pieces of foam. Um, they will mix together uh, as it sits and as they move around. And then I'm also going to tilt the board back and forth a little bit to get them to mix a little bit more. This is a little butane lighter that you can buy at 7-Eleven or store or anywhere. And this is comes in really handy. You can use it to get rid of the bubbles in the resin and it's uh, just convenient. Mine happens to be out of butane, so I'm going to grab my blowtorch, which is a little bit more of an investment, but also a good thing to have around. And this is what you might use to get the pop the bubbles that appear in the resin. Um, and really, just a couple squirts from this from this blowtorch are enough to pop most of the bubbles. I tend to let 
it sit for another five minutes or so and more bubbles will, will appear and I'll come by and uh, hit it again with the butane lighter. You don't want to let it, uh, you don't want to uh, use the butane lighter too much or it'll start melting the styrofoam. It'll also start burning the resin. So just little puffs of the of the lighter are usually enough to get rid of the bubbles. I did another experiment with this particular board. The day after, after it had almost cured, almost hardened, but the surface was still a little bit tacky, I covered the surface with chalk dust, with calcium carbonate. It's a product or a substance you can buy at ceramics supply stores. Um, sometimes they'll have it at an, at an art store. Um, but I covered it entirely with this chalk dust and then dusted off all the excess chalk dust and it mostly turns transparent. Um, but what that does and what I was trying to get it to do was make the surface more waxy, more uh, more matte instead of that really glossy surface you tend to get with resin. So that was just another experiment to, to play around with different surfaces. And that's it for this demo. <laughs>